very well. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you for coming. Uh, today's uh, media announcement is in relation to a change in policy for South Australia Police in relation to our operational members carrying tasers, electronic control devices. Up until this point in time, operational police have been required to keep the uh, electronic control device in the boot of the car in a secure case and only bring the device out when they were attending a high-risk situation where the offender was armed. As a result of a considered and staged rollout of our use of tasers, uh, we are now moving to the next phase of deployment where officers will be authorised to carry the taser on their equipment belt as a part of their daily equipment use. Uh, the other change that we are introducing is that offenders no longer have to be armed for a police officer to uh, deploy the taser in accordance with our policy. This change has come about as a result of the recognition that uh, officer safety and the safety of members of the public is absolutely paramount and the TASER provides a viable tactical option that can minimise the, uh, the level of harm that may need to be applied to a person who is presenting in a high-risk situation. Is this an indication of what those situations might be where an offender isn't armed but presents a significant enough risk to an officer? I think there are lots of examples that any operational police officer can provide where they have confronted extremely aggressive, violent people who are capable of inflicting serious harm either to the officers or to, to other members of the public where there's no likelihood of being able to restrain that person without someone being injured. And I think that would be an excellent example of where a taser, as one of the tactical options, may be considered to uh, resolve that situation safely without anyone being seriously injured or killed. Both Matt and Gary Burns have said when tasers first deployed that they didn't want to see officers walking around with them on their belts. And this is a significant departure from the original attitude. Is there a specific incident that's brought it about? Uh, no, there is no specific incident that has led to the, uh, the, the change in policy in this regard, and this change has been done in consultation with our current Commissioner, Gary Burns, who has endorsed this policy. Uh, there are several instances where we have been able to observe the fact that uh, police officers have been limited in their, their options in terms of resolving, safely resolving situations because of the absence of a, a taser being readily available. Uh, this, whilst it is uh, an additional piece of equipment that the officers have to carry and it will be quite clear to people that they are armed with the taser, we see that the, the opportunity for them to resort to this particular tactical option without having to return to a vehicle uh, provides a higher level of operational safety for our police and another option that they can utilise to ensure the safety of members of the public when they're attending jobs. A high-risk situation uh, uh, is not always something that is pre-planned. Uh, there are plenty of circumstances where police attend jobs and uh, the, the circumstances of that particular tasking changes in front of the police and uh, this option being readily available gives them a greater capacity to safely resolve those incidents. Isn't there an agency in the state where other police forces have similar policies to this where tasers have been used inappropriately, for instance, when um, an offender might be passively resisting arrest? What, what's to say that that's going to stop ha uh, to not happen here? Um, I can say with uh, a high degree of confidence that we won't see those sorts of behaviours in South Australia. We've taken a very considered and measured approach to rolling out tasers uh, used by our operational police and the reality is that all of our tasers carry uh, uh, video recording devices and those devices are activated when the taser is levelled. Now all of those instances are reviewed, every, every taser use is reviewed and uh, decisions are made about the appropriateness of that use and where the, the use has not been in accordance with our policy then we've taken action in relation to those officers. How frequently have you used tasers since their introduction in 2009? Uh, has there been any um, as I said, we've uh, closely monitored all uh, reported taser use and there have been 355 occasions since we provided tasers to our general duties police in 2009 and of those there have been no, <coughs> excuse me, of those there have been no instances where misuse has been recorded. So that's 355 deployments, how many times have they actually been discharged or activated? 355 deployments of the taser and that includes 78 occasions when the barbs have actually been fired uh, and the, the taser has been used to its full effect. Uh, the other remaining occasions in, involve the taser being drawn from the holster and levelled at a person or uh, the, the laser which is operated within the taser also being activated and the person is painted with the laser which is a very clear indication to that person that uh, things are escalating to a point where they may actually be tasered. Is it possible that be rather than just one officer per patrol, every officer issued a taser to be worn on the belt? 
Well, that, that may well be part of the next phase of a rollout. Uh, at this point in time, we've taken a significant step forward. Uh, one taser per patrol crew being worn on the accoutrement belt provides a significant uh, tactical option that they can take advantage of. We will continue to monitor the use of tasers by South Australian Police and uh, any considerations about where we go from here will be based on the evaluation which is ongoing. Is that decision for the A1 officer largely a resourcing decision because you don't have the tasers at the moment or is it, is it a, a safety decision? Well, it's, it's, a, uh, it's based on the fact that uh, a taser is one tactical option and if both officers are uh, using the same tactical option, it, it limits their capacity to take advantage of other options should they be necessary. There are occasions when the taser is not the best option and it is uh, only evident once it's been deployed that that may be the case and there may be a need to resort to other uh, tactical options and that may include in extreme cases a firearm. So both officers having a taser is not operationally uh, the most sound decision. What guidelines will the police be given to help their decision making in terms of choosing, say, the taser over cuts? Our officers, operational police, receive regular training and taser use, uh, firearms, batons and OC spray use are all incorporated into that regular operational safety training and officers may only carry any of our tactical options if they are operationally certified. Is there a risk though they'll opt now, um, being given tasers, they'll opt for that over, say, capsicum spray or batons? The, the, the measured response or rollout that we've had for tasers, I think, guarantees that our South Australian police do not consider tasers to be their first tactical option. Uh, our, our expectation is in any incident where there is a need to deploy uh, operational safety equipment that the officers take a staged approach and the first step in that process is negotiation. That's, that's the very first starting point and we escalate from there. There's been some discussion, I think, uh, and, and policy discussion in Queensland about whether officers should be um, fitted with body-mounted cameras because the cameras on tasers only operate when they're Yes, we are currently uh, working through the options for body-worn video. We have trialled various devices over the last couple of years. Uh, the technology in that space is changing quite dynamically and we're seeing different options becoming available and we are continuing to explore that. Is that something you could see? I mean, it's our expectation that body-worn video will be a feature of the normal patrol officers' equipment uh, in time to come, but it's a matter of uh, identifying the appropriate devices and uh, rolling those out when we 